Hi, my name is Colby Kegel, and I'm a customer success engineer at PingCap, makers of TyDB. In this video, we're going to walk through the TyDB bin log tutorial I recently created. This tutorial is targeted toward users who may have some familiarity with the TyDB architecture and may have already set up a TyDB cluster, though it's not mandatory to have done so. We're going to start a very simple TyDB cluster as part of this tutorial. This tutorial assumes you're using a modern Linux distribution on x86-64. I'm going to be using a minimal CentOS 7 installation running in VMware, and I recommend you do either that or start a CentOS 7 VM in your favorite cloud provider. What is TyDB bin log? Well, TyDB bin log is a solution to collect binary log data from TyDB and provide real-time data backup and replication. It pushes incremental data updates made to a TyDB server into downstream platforms of your choice. You can use TyDB bin log for incremental backups, to replicate data from one TyDB cluster to another, or to send TyDB updates through Kafka to a downstream platform of your choice. TyDB bin log is particularly useful when you migrate from MySQL or MariaDB to TyDB. TyDB bin log enables application traffic to TyDB to be pushed downstream into a MySQL or MariaDB instance or cluster. This ensures that even if the migration to TyDB encounters problems, you can easily revert the application to MySQL or MariaDB. The TyDB bin log architecture has two components, the pump and the drainer. Several pump nodes form a pump cluster for high availability. Each TyDB server in your TyDB cluster connects to each node in the pump cluster. So each node in the pump cluster has all updates from all TyDB server nodes. You start individual drainers to read binary log data from the pump cluster and insert it into any of several downstream platforms that you have configured. You can use Kafka and connect that to a downstream platform of your choice. You can have a drainer connect to a downstream TyDB cluster or MySQL or MariaDB server or you can have a drainer that writes local incremental backup files. We're going to use MariaDB in this case because it's included by default in CentOS 7. You can copy and paste the commands in this tutorial to follow along. And I've already done these ones. I've already installed MariaDB server and I've already downloaded this package to save a little bit of time. So, the first thing we'll do is write some configuration files that'll help us get all the nodes in our cluster started up. I'm just using some simple printf statements in bash here to do that. And we could use this bash loop to look at all the files that we've created. Now we can start the nodes in the cluster. Generally, nodes in a TyDB cluster can be started in any order, and they're, cl they're clever enough to wait for other nodes in the cluster that they rely on. Unfortunately, the pump isn't quite there, so you might find that the pump doesn't register with the PD server before you start TyDB server. Because TyDB server is configured to write to a pump, it won't start unless there's a pump available. In this case, pump did register with the PD server before TyDB started, so there wasn't any problem. But if you find that the TyDB server fails to start, I would say just try again to run that single command. Now we're ready to connect to the TyDB server and we'll just have it tell us what version it is. So here we have a very recent build from yesterday and you will probably see a different one running this on a different day. Now that we have our TyDB cluster running, we can start the downstream MariaDB server that we'll write to. And then we'll start the drainer, which will connect to the pump cluster and begin writing to the downstream MariaDB server instance. Let's connect to the MariaDB server and take a look at what we have going on there. So you should see already that there's this TyDB bin log database. And in the TyDB bin log database is a checkpoint table. This is created by the drainer to record up to what point transactions have been committed to the downstream MariaDB instance. It records a transaction timestamp, and it can use that if you restart the drainer to 
begin replicating from the correct position. I'm running all of this inside the new screen. So I'm going to start a new screen window and connect here to the TIDB server. So I've created a custom prompt here. This is the TIDB server. And then back in the other window is the MariaDB server. So inside the TIDB server, we'll run these commands to create a database, use that database, create a table, insert some rows into that table, and then select them back out. So here we've done that, and we can see that there are five rows in the table in the TIDB cluster. If we switch back to our screen window that has the connection to the MariaDB server, we can use the TIDB test database, see that our table's there, and select the rows from the table. So with just these few simple steps, we've started a TIDB cluster, we've started a pump, we've started a drainer, we've started a MariaDB server, and we're already replicating from the TIDB cluster to a downstream MariaDB server instance. And that's the gist of TIDB bin log. There's one more piece to talk about, and that's the bin log CTL tool. So this is to query the state of the bin log cluster and control the members of the same. So we'll use the bin log CTL with the command drainers to get a list of the drainers. We only have one, so we have one row of output. We can see here that drainer is online. We can use a similar command to query the pumps in the cluster. And what we'll see if we kill the drainer and query again for the drainers, we'll see that instead of being online here, now it's paused, even though we've killed it. That means that the pump cluster expects that the drainer will rejoin. It believes that the drainer is still an active part of the cluster, it's just unavailable temporarily. This can cause an issue. If you shut down the whole cluster, the pump will refuse to start because the drainer is not available. To avoid that problem, you can use one of these three steps. You can either stop the drainer using big bin log CTL instead of killing the process. You can start the drainer before starting the pump, or you can use bin log CTL after starting the placement driver, that's the PD server, but before starting either the drainer or the pump to update the state of the paused drainer. Because we have the PD running, and the drainer is not running, we can use that step now to update the drainer. So we've updated it to be offline. And if we query again, we'll see now the drainer is offline instead of paused. This is worth noting because if you try to shut down the cluster and restart it without doing some of these steps, you'll find that it's difficult to get the nodes back online. And speaking of shutting down the cluster, the easiest way to do so is using this simple bash loop that I've created. Shutting the nodes in the cluster down in a particular order means that you won't have any delays while some nodes wonder if they should wait for the other nodes to come back online to wrap up some work before they end. So copy that, execute this loop, and you'll find that each node in the cluster shuts down in order. And that's that. That's the tutorial to set up TIDB bin log and replicate from an upstream TIDB cluster to a downstream MariaDB server instance. As mentioned at the top of the tutorial, you should not use this deployment methodology for testing or for production. I recommend that you, in, that you review the TIDB bin log cluster user guide for more information. And I recommend that you consult the local deployment guide and the testing deployment from binary tarball guides for best practices of establishing a real testing deployment. I'd like to talk to you more about this, so head to pingcap.com slash tidbslack to join the conversation. Thank you for your time.